tell me when to do. Uh, yeah, you can, you can start in one minute. Sure. You have five minutes your time. Yeah, today was last day of uh, finals, so school's over now. Yeah, the students are kind of distracted sometimes. Oh yeah, in finals, they're under super stress, but in one sense, it's also good because it's crunch time, so. <laughs> They're more serious about life in general, I guess. Yeah, and when they're done, they, there's some sort of relief, you know? So they have a moment to breathe and think. So I guess right at five year time, you can start chanting for five minutes, four or five minutes. Did you manage to source your books? Uh, we, it turned out we did have some more Spanish books than they thought, and so I'm okay right now. And I've been able to go to the spot, even, even though it's, it's filled with police. They, and I'm not really supposed to be there, but they haven't noticed me. Hey, that's the safest place to be. Yeah. Right in the action. <laughs> I used to love the DMVs, you know, we used to work them there. Yeah, it's funny. Okay, well, why don't you start turning now for just a few minutes? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
ram ram hare hare hari nam sankirtan ki jai shri lopo pari ki jai we would like to thank everyone for tuning in today and we're very grateful also for our special guest tonight his grace to be here at prabhu um so many of you have, have seen him on our zoom program earlier times he spoke on the history of krishna consciousness in russia it was a very fascinating talk and he's been in russia many times um Navina joined Krishna Conscious Iskand in, in Switzerland as a teenager. He's been a leading book distributor of Srila Prabhupada's books for decades. And he still travels and distributes books, preaches. He has kind of a first-hand view of some of the uh, temples and devotional communities in America because he's been traveling very often the last since the pandemic happened um he's traveled quite a bit and he he sees the good where he, wherever he goes he tries to and tonight's topic is going to be uh the power of appreciation which is very important for Vaishnavas so without further ado we'd like to invite him to speak uh, a little bit and any of you can ask questions or put them in the chat as as it goes along. So th thank you so much, Naveen. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Sarvabhama Prabhu. Thank you for having me on your Friday program. Om Ajnanati Marandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuron Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mukam Karotiva, Chalam Pangum Langai, Tegrim Yat Kripadam Aham Vande, Sri Guru Dinataranam, Paramananda Maravam, Sri Chitanya Shwaram. Banchakal Patarubyas Cha, Kripasindubyeva Cha, Patitanam Pavanebyo, Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna. Thanks for having me again on your program. So the power of appreciation. Today I was distributing books at UC Berkeley on Telegraph and the campus in Berkeley. It's the last day of finals, the last day of school for this year. And I was mentioning to quite a number of students that you may come from a good background as most students there are pretty privileged and you may have a lot of assets, but if you can't appreciate them, if you can't appreciate what you have, technically you never have it. In other words, if you're not capable of <clears throat> not just acknowledging, but actually appreciating, of showing our gratitude for what we have, technically we're poor. You can be a millionaire and you can be a pauper. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening to a lot of people in this world that even though materially speaking, there is a lot of resources, there's a lot of assets because the attitude is off, the attitude is not properly aligned. People are always feeling scarcity, they're feeling anxiety, they're feeling deprivation, they're feeling this angst, this fear. Uh, so um, we had a few issues a year ago here in the, Northern Californian area. There was forest fires, there was election, there was pandemic. It's just a lot of contributing factors that aggravated the situation. And I decided that instead of just staying put and going crazy, I just hit the road. So I just filled the van up with books and I went on a little trail 
And the last six months, I traveled 14,000 miles from Sacramento to San Diego, over to Miami, up to Maine and Vermont, and upstate New York, Ohio, Michigan, down through Iowa, over to Utah. I'm missing a few, I know. And then up to Seattle, Washington, and back down to California. So that's the last six months. Because I felt that a lot of our teachers and mentors are getting up there in age. And almost every week we hear of somebody passing away. So why can't we appreciate people while they're still alive before they actually leave us? And I was really glad I did because some of the people that I met and spent good time with and appreciated, they're already passed on, like Sura Prabhu. I spent time with him in Los Angeles. He, uh, Sura Prabhu, for those of you who may not know him, was a very dedicated book distributor for many years, and then also temple president in St. Louis. And then for many decades, he was helping run the BBT in Los Angeles and taking care of bookkeeping and finances and many, many other things. And he was so steady, he practically went into office seven days a week. Even though in the last 10 years, his health was really down, he had several uh, debilitating illnesses, chronic ailments, but he would still go to the office seven days a week. He just had such a service ethic. It was unbelievable. So I sat with him in his uh, apartment just next to the BBT and just showed my appreciation for him and try to extract a little bit of his realizations of his wisdom. And I have found that if we take that time to be with people and spend the quality time, then Krishna always speaks through his devotees and, and, and gives you some nuggets, some, some real gems, some real precious uh, realizations. So Sura Prabhu, I saw that his dedication to Srila Prabhupada and to the mission of Srila Prabhupada was so palpable, it was so vi visible that it just had a real impact on me. It was really endearing. He is a person who, you could say from a mature perspective, has every reason to, to complain, to, to, to be upset or to be disturbed, but he was not mentioning one thing about his condition. He was just optimizing his time for his hearing and chanting and for his service. So that was very uh, inspiring to see. Uh, before I got to LA, I actually went and saw His Holiness Giraj Swami in Carpinteria and spent three hours with him. He, he was very kind and gracious and he hosted me and, and uh, shared his lunch, shared lunch with me. And he told me that from his experiences with Srila Prabhupada, something that was really striking him was that Srila Prabhupada was unconditionally loving. Yet at the same time, completely detached. And that's quite a, a conundrum. It seems like a contradiction. How can you be totally loving and have no expectations? Mm -hmm. Because as soon as we love somebody, we think, okay, so where is the reciprocation? What am I gonna get out of this? But he said that Prabhupada was unconditionally loving. He was giving his love freely to one and all. And he was completely detached. He knew that many of these people, they would just walk out the door and never come back. Even some of his own disciples, that people would drop the ball, as we say, because he had full faith in the process of bhakti, that anything people do, any moment that they spend with devotees will be for their internal benefit. So I found that a very striking, striking message that he gave me. I also asked him for advice because that's what we're supposed to do when we meet sadhus, that we open our heart and 
we, we ask for advice. So I ask him what to do when, because I'm embarking on this appreciation tour and I'm gonna meet friends and mentors, some of my teachers. And sometimes there are certain issues, certain misunderstandings or certain issues of the past that I would like to resolve. So how to do that in a Vaishnav way? I don't know if any of you ever had any issues with any devotees. Uh, has that ever happened to you or is it just me? Thank you for your great audience participation. I know just, you're there. It's just okay. you. Okay. So <laughs> um, how to do that in a non-confrontational way, in a Vaishnav way. And he being the perfect sadhu and Vaishnav gentleman that he is, told me that if you have issues with a, with a senior devotee, you can bring forward your issue in the case, in, 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 and you frame it as a question. Mm -hmm. so, so you just ask a question. And if you're not satisfied with the answer, you can probe a little deeper. So, but don't startle them. So don't, don't push too hard. <laughs> just just uh, see what, what the response is. And if you're not satisfied, rephrase it and try to go a little further. But because our intention should not be to hurt or to upset uh, or to disturb person, but to clarify and to resolve the issue. So I found that really helpful. And I used his technique on my tour and it's been working pretty good. <laughs> because sometimes you address a certain issue, you frame it in a question and you immediately see by the response, like is this person open and willing to talk or just keep driving? Like just, just move on, don't, don't, don't push your luck, okay? So that was really helpful advice. Uh, I went to one place uh, without mentioning names and places. And I met a person who's, uh, I consider a friend, a peer. Yet over the last few times that we met, I didn't really feel, as they say in California, I didn't really feel the love, you know, when we were together. So I went there and we, we spent some time together. And I told him that just what I share with you now that the last few times I didn't really feel it. And it must have been because I've offended you or I done or said or something that upset you. So I wanted to apologize for that. And he paused for a while and he thought deeply and he said, Navina, there is nothing, there's nothing there. And if there would be something there, believe me, I would remember it. <laughs> And that makes me conclude that I must have offended you and done or said something to upset you. And I said, no, most likely we were just being our, our, our usual selves, that we were just very uh, project oriented, trying to get things done in the world of names, but maybe not very considerate and not so much in tune with the needs of the other person. So we paid our respects and embraced. And that evening he invited me to co-share the Bhagavad Gita talk with him uh, for his students. Now you have to understand in his area, he's the guy, he's the dude. So he, that's his audience, they're his students. Yet all of a sudden there was two chairs in the front and two, two guys sharing the mic back and forth. And that was quite an interesting experience for his students because they saw that our teacher is not just smart and cool, but our teacher also has friends. <laughs> that was kind of a new experience for them. So, and, and it was really amicable. It was really uh, an interesting dynamic, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Then I went to uh, other places where I just really appreciated the team effort of the devotees who, who put on uh, like, for instance, the Rati Yatra in New York, even though the circumstances and the times were difficult, but still the devotees, they pulled it off. They made it happen. And Sarvam Prabhu came and, and uh, there was 
a great Ratiatri in New York on Fifth Avenue with, with a wonderful parade and a great feast and books went flying in all 10 directions. And the devotees had a great time. So just to see how there were so many, so many individuals collaborating selflessly uh, contributing to this event, it was very uh, endearing. It was very inspiring. Naturally, wherever I went, I tried to go out and distribute Prabhupada's books because that's one of my main services. So while doing that service, I've realized people always ask me, what's your secret? How, how, how come you, you're doing this for 40 years and, and you've distributed so many books and so on? What's your secret? What's your technique? And I say, basically, it's very simple. If you learn the art of appreciating people, they will eat out of the palm of your hand. <laughs> like I can walk into a farmer's market or into a store and, and I just ask the people, did you make all this or did you grow all this? And they say, yeah, take whatever you want. <laughs> you <know? laughs> They're just like, take vegetables, take fruits, take whatever you want. I mean, it works. You try it out. Go to a farmer's market and appreciate the, the people there. And you'll be surprised. And then if you bring them these spiritual literatures and you say, thank you for being out here and doing what you do. And just, we'd like to appreciate you. And we're giving this to all the conscious uh, farmers or artists. And people will reciprocate very generously, very generously. So I was at a uh, art fair in Ann Arbor, Michigan biggest art fair in the country with hundreds of thousands of people visiting and thousands of artists showing off paintings, sculptures, and all kinds of art. And I would just not deal with the public, just go from booth to booth and deal with the artists. And I would just tell them, thank you for being out here trying to communicate a message through your art. And for all the conscious artists, we brought these uh, meditation books and they're sponsored, they're for you. And if you like to contribute something, we're monks, it helps us to spread the message. And people were so generous, they were so reciprocal. It was really amazing, it blew me away. One lady, she, she was almost in tears. She said that when I was a young girl, I don't know, did I tell the story from the Lithuanian artist last time on the Russian show? Did I tell that story, Sarva? You remember? No? I can't hear you. You gotta unmute yourself. Because I'm mixing genres here. I'm mixing Russia and... Yeah, I don't think you saw that story. Okay, so she said, when I was a young girl in Lithuania, I had many existential problems. I was in a lot of distress. But all my questions have been answered by the Bhagavad Gita. But then when I was 16, my parents migrated from Lithuania, which is in the Baltics, part of the former Soviet Union, to America. And I had to leave behind my books, my friends, my art, my everything. And I had to start again from scratch, from zero. And now 35 years later, I'm an accomplished artist. And you walk into my booth here and you give me the same book that impacted my life back then, 30 years, 35 years ago. So she was very happy and very emotional to get the same book. It just popped up. It just came back into her life. So she took all the books I had and responded very, uh, with a lot of appreciation. So I found that if we take that first step of appreciating others, then people always pay you back in the same currency. Mm -hmm. But if we are insecure and needy and clinging and we try to get something out of it uh, for ourselves, then usually people are holding back, they're pulling back, they're, they're feeling a little uh, reticent, so to speak. So generosity breeds generosity and insecurity breeds insecurity. So whatever we appreciate, it appreciates. You try it out as a, as a not just as a mind exercise, but you can actually try it out. Just try to appreciate three people every day. Just say something nice about them. You know, it can be a spouse, it can be a friend, it can be a colleague, a coworker, 
or just walk down the street and appreciate people. I, I do it on a daily basis. Like in Berkeley, I park at the temple down on Stewart and Telegraph and I walk up Telegraph Avenue. And the first person I usually see is Eddie. Eddie is a guy who works for the city's municipal department and he's cleaning the streets. So I usually see Eddie first because he's always out there early. And I greet him and I appreciate him. Then it's the guards at the dispensary, the big, you know, uh, islanders who are <laughs> standing in front of the dispensary. I greet them and I uh, have a few words with them. So it already puts me into that mood of appreciation. And then usually I start off with uh, distributing books to students. So just by appreciating a person for who they are, not even what they do, but who they are, touches their heart and it opens their heart and they become uh, available, they become accessible to whatever message we want to communicate to them. You ever noticed when you hear Srila Prabhupada's uh, lectures, how he uh, thanks his audience, how, how, how he is very courteous and very, very kind in his delivery. Like, it's very uh, impressive. I'm, I'm going through the conversations now and there are some people who are really like, they don't get it. Like they're pretty thick. <laughs> and Prabhupada, like a, like a gentle mother is just making the same point again and again from different angles, just trying to help the kid understand what he's trying to communicate. And still a lot of them don't get it. They, they just not there. But Prabhupada, he just has such a patience and such a, such a kindness to communicate this message. So me being rather impatient, um, yeah, I struggle with that. So I was down in uh, New Orleans in the, in the French Quarter and I went out with Drumilla Prabhu. <laughs> he showed me his, 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 his stomping ground and we were distributing books there. And then there was one lady, she was jogging and she had all the gear, the outfit of a jogger and she had a big pit bull dog. Usually not your likely suspect, but she just stopped at some point and she was a little out of breath. So she was just catching a breath. And I thought, okay, why not? That's a good time. You know, like she, she's out of breath. Let me, <laughs> let me try and approach her. And uh, I spoke to her. And I showed her the books and, and I said, we're monks, meditation, yoga. Uh, and I asked her like what I ask everybody, what's your biggest challenge right now? Patience, expectations or anxiety? And she just broke down and started crying and crying and crying. And I said, what's wrong girl? She said, my fiance just broke up with me. We were supposed to get married and cheated on me and this and that. And now I decided to become spiritual. I already became a vegetarian. And I want to become seriously about my spiritual life. And now you just appear and, and, and show me these books. So she took all the books that I had. And uh, I told her, girl, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, like, uh, you're all right. Everyone else is crazy. <laughs> just by appreciating people and, 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 and seeing the good in them is such a, it's such a, that validation is so powerful. It is so strong that it really endears people. We can see in Srila Prabhupada how as a pure devotee at X-ray vision, he saw completely who is who and what's what. There was no, no doubt about that. He had full perception of who his prospects were. Yet Prabhupada preferred to see the potential in them rather than to see the deficiency. There was a lot of deficiency. There was a lot of weird stuff that didn't add up. But Prabhupada just said, <clears throat> never mind, they're here. Krishna has sent me these boys and girls and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fan that spark. I'm going to invest the energy. Why? How could he do that? Because he had full faith in the process, that this process of bhakti is powerful and it, it transforms people's lives. So Prabhupada treated everybody who walked through that door as the future leaders of the Hare Krishna movement. And guess what happened? They became the future leaders of the Hare Krishna movement. If you see that video, 26 Second Avenue, all these stoned out hippies 
who are who are playing on 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 gongs and 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 just nodding along to the beat with long hair and they're very kind of compromised in their faculties. Prabhupada kept on investing, 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 and seeing the good in them, and they transformed and they became amazing devotees. So somewhere in Michigan, I met uh, <clears throat> a person, Parabhakti Prabhu. Some of you know him. Uh, he is a disciple of <clears throat> Solomon Stamal Krishna Maharaj. And he, he joined in Houston, actually, in the uh, late 70s, around uh, that time. And when he was doing uh, his service, in the beginning, the, the temple was not where it is now in Houston. It was downtown Houston. Uh, I don't know how many of you were there and remember that. But it was somewhere downtown. And he said that when he was driving to the temple in his Sankirtan van, there was a lot of stops, a lot of stop signs. And he blew a stop sign. And one semi came and just hit him and plowed over his van. And he actually got thrown out of the van and the van landed on him. And he was totally mangled. They brought him to a hospital and... The head nurse was yelling at him because he didn't have a, an insurance proof. So they wanted to kick him out. They wanted to throw him out of the hospital. It was a Catholic hospital, it was the head sister. She said, you can't stay, you have to leave, you have to get out. And, and he was standing there and his left leg was really in bad shape. And as he moved his left leg, his right ear was twinching. And <laughs> he really felt like he was losing it. So as she's yelling at him, he, he kind of fell over. There was another nurse who just put him in a wheelchair. And as he came back, they still were telling him to leave. So as he was getting his bearings, he tried to leave. He was heading for the door. A, a young doctor came to him and handed him two bags with uh, medical supplies. He handed him two bags with bandages and medicines and different things to clean, told him how to take care of his wounds. And he said, come on Sunday morning, there's a free medical clinic in the back of the hospital. And by the way, I'm a devotee, I'm a Hare Krishna. And uh, I met Prabhupada in Los Angeles. He said that he was in the temple in Los Angeles in the mid seventies, and Prabhupada was there and Prabhupada asked him, what do you do? He says, I'm going to medical school. And Prabhupada said, you should finish. You should study, become a doctor. You should finish your, your, your education. And so basically he, sa he saved Parabhakti Prabhu's life. And Parabhakti Prabhu is, you know, has done many successful services for the movement, uh, including being a lawyer and helping many devotees. So... We can see how people have become touched by uh, the devotees' appreciation and attention and affection, how their life has changed to such an extent that they themselves have become touchstones who in turn uh, touch so many other people's lives. So, I went up to, you know, I was down in, in uh, Tucson, Arizona. And it's the biggest gem and mineral fair of the country. Uh, you know, they get all the crystals and minerals and stones and gems out of the earth. And they wholesale them there. The whole world comes there. There's hundreds of vendors and a lot of people. So I, I went... Uh, and the devotees were distributing a lot of prasadam because the Govinda's restaurant from Tucson, they were actually catering to that event. So they were selling lunch boxes to all the vendors because the vendors can't go anywhere. They have to sit in their shop all day. So the devotees went there and, and just brought lunches to all the people and really inexpensive and, and first-class prasadam. And the people were so happy 
that I was just going around and asking people, how was your lunch today? And, <laughs> and now we got the books also. And they were so happy. Everybody was taking books. Hmm? Uh, one person, he was mounting up a sign on, on, on a building. And then he saw me, he said, Krishna is such a rascal. And <laughs> I said, why? He said, my name is Shyamananda. He said, uh, I was on, on uh, RBC, on uh, Rupanuga Vedic College. He was traveling with the devotees from Kansas City. And he was initiated. And he said, wherever I go, the devotees find me. Krishna is not letting me go. Wherever I go in the country, devotees show up. And Krishna is so funny, he's so ironic that, that he just pops up out of nowhere and says, hi, I'm already here. Huh? So I went there and gave him a big hug and we talked. I gave him prasadam. And then I gave him some books. So he was really happy to, to meet a devotee. So then I went, some of them were just in motel rooms and little tables outside, but some were in pavilions, real first class jewelry. And one of the biggest vendors, he had actually a few booths in different places. He's a Russian guy out of San Francisco. I showed him the books and he said, Vedas, yeah, I know, I know. And I said, I know you know, but you, for your team, you just keep these and you give whatever you like. So he went back to the office and he came and then he held out his hands like this. And he said, guess what I have in my hands? And I mean, it could have been anything, right? It could have been a crystal. It could have been money. It could have, I just looked at him and I said, you have $108 in your hand. The same spirit that it's in your heart is also in my heart. And if you read these books, then you will know whatever there is to know. So he smiled. He gave me the $108. And <laughs> nothing further had to be said. Huh? So we see that when we go out on a limb and we try to be an instrument of Krishna's compassion, that Matak Smriti Rgyanam Aponam Chara, Krishna will... Tell us what we need to know. He will give us the words. He will give us the inspiration to act adequately, to inspire uh, the person. So we should not feel uh, insecure or, oh, I can't do this, or I cannot talk to anybody. Uh, I'm just a, an insignificant person. Yes, we might be, but as Srila Prabhupada oftentimes gave the example that even an insignificant person, when they put on a uniform, then they become a representative of the government or of an institution. So <clears throat> the potency is there and the potency is, is very powerful, very strong. Huh? Sometimes we think that it already all happened. Like we miss Krishna, we miss Lord Chaitanya, we miss Prabhupada, but that's a wrong way of looking at things. Because actually parampara means the further down you go, the sweeter it gets because you get more and more mercy. You get more and more realization and more and more. Uh, it becomes more condensed. It becomes more sweet. I don't know if you feel like that. <laughs> but we can either beat ourselves up and say we missed the boat. Or we can say we're very fortunate because we have so much of wealth of experience of devotees. Who, who have been practicing for so long. Because the good old days weren't always that good. Huh? They, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of rough times also. Like I was at the University of California in Berkeley the last two days and always loved going there because I know that many of my friends and mentors like Sarvabhoma Prabhu and Mahatma Prabhu and Krishna Kshetra Swami and Vidyananda Maharaj and uh, so many countless others, they went to school there. So I always think like, hey, sadhus like this have walked this campus. <laughs> so this is a holy place. Prabhupada was here. Prabhupada lectured here. He, 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 he shared Krishna consciousness here. So, and to me, it just transforms the whole, the whole atmosphere. I was in Santa Cruz uh, a few days ago, and I met a man, and he said, I was there, I met, I met this man and I said, where? And he said, uh, 1975, I, I, I went to the San Francisco airport to pick him up. 
and he was just some hippie. He was just some some kid, and he was his eyes completely. He like 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 somebody, you know, flipped the light switch. <laughs> he just became ecstatic, just just remembering that that he was in Prabhupada's association. So, Krishna consciousness is an appreciation uh, process. We can see how uh, the Bhagavatam is. Uh, really reciprocal between questions and answers. Uh, somebody is asking questions and appreciating, and then somebody is sharing and also sharing their appreciation. So for me, Krishna consciousness is really about learning this art of, of appreciating uh, all the gifts that we have been given <clears throat> and then accepting them wholeheartedly and sharing them to our capacity uh, with others. So <clears throat> whenever I feel that there is some dryness or some uh, bumpy road, then usually it is because I have uh, failed in appreciating the people that are surrounding me and the, uh, the gifts, the opportunities that I have been given. Uh, and so, but it's a, it's, it's a moment of connection to just reconnect. It's like if you unplug a cord, it goes dark, but if you plug it back in, then the light goes back on. So, so it's a moment of connection or disconnection. It's, it's not that, it's, it's a long process and, and it, oh, I have to work my way back up in order to, uh, get back into it. So now is the last few days of the year. I know many of you are pushing hard to distribute books, to share Krishna consciousness, to, to do so many services. Um, personally, I feel quite useless because I used to go out for long hours and distribute vast amounts of books. And now I'm just doing a little bit, but I, I, I rejoice in the fact to see that there is now a whole movement there's a whole it's not just a few individuals but there is whole families there is whole congregations engaged in sharing uh, this message of lord chaitanya and that makes me very hopeful very confident and very certain that we will see a, a great change a great impact uh, through this transcendental revolution of, of krishna consciousness so these are a couple of things that I wanted to share. I can tell many more stories, but I wanted to know, maybe you have some questions or some uh, reflections that you would like to share. Yes, Kishori Priya, please. Hare Krishna Prabhuji and with Pranam Jashla Prabhupada. Um, so, you know, while you were talking about um, uh, appreciation, uh, I was thinking of the verse uh, from Shikshashtakam, uh, third verse. So, Amanina Manadena. So, you're talking about Manadena, right? Uh, appreciation. But is, is Amanina a precursor to it? or And is, is that why a person is not able to appreciate others, that we are not humble enough? Yeah, often, yeah. That, is, often that is the case. Just like if I have a problem with another devotee, I can either reflect on the things that are wrong and that that person does or doesn't do that disturb me, or if I have humility, I, I, I'll appreciate uh, that person's contributions. And, and so, but that requires that I, I have that humility in my heart. Otherwise, I can't see those things. If I'm proud, then I'll say, oh, no, no, no. It's it, person is useless. You know, it's like, it's useless. It's just not, not up to standard. It's not acceptable. But if I'm humble and I put myself in a lower position, then, then there's so many things that I can actually appreciate. Huh? So it is definitely a precursor if, for appreciation to, to have humility. 
Otherwise, we'll be like Duryodhan, that we go out into the world and we say, sorry, we, we can't find anybody. That, <laughs> we can't find anybody that, that's any good, you know, or that's even up to our standard, so to speak. Why? Because he was just lacking that, that humility. So in the material world, I mean, you're speaking about um, our devotional service, right? When we go out, distribute books, or when we interact with devotees. But in the material world, um, how do we apply this? So we, um, we can find good in almost everybody. There's some good in everybody. So, but we, when we deal with people and when we have to tell them that there are some faults, just for the sake of, you know, it's, it's just, uh, so how do we deal with that? So do we just appreciate them first and then point out their faults? Yes, first, the first thing is you have to see what's the situation and what's my relationship with this person? Like, am I gonna improve something by saying what I'm about to say or am I gonna make it worse? So first, let that go through your head. And what's our relationship? Like, if you are in a, in, a, in, a, in a business relationship or in a family relationship or your colleagues and you have a certain mandate, you have a certain responsibility to address certain issues, then we have to learn the art of doing it nicely, which usually means you do the sandwich, you know, you, you give some appreciation, you show some room for improvement and you give some appreciation. And in this way, it goes down well. But with some people, they're not, they can only deal with pranams and pranami. They can only deals with, deal with, uh, with respect and <laughs> glorification or gifts. So then give them that if that's all they can take. But, but if you have, it's your duty to address certain issues, certain points, then we have to learn the art of how to do that. Now, of course, that's a thankless task. That's why doctors, teachers, and, and gurus they're never really fully healthy because they always take on some of the stress and the distress <laughs> of, their, of their subordinates or of their clients. So, because you have to have that empathy and empathy, compassion means I'm gonna suffer with you because I have to feel what you feel, otherwise I can't really help you. So, but we can't allow ourselves to become uh, influenced by that because then it will weaken our ability to help that person so you have to stay sober you have to stay clear-headed level-headed and that means really being krishna conscious that means really helping the person now um there's different strategies that you can take depending on who you are and what the relationship is prabhupada saraswati pat says that you you praise a person and then uh, you tell them the facts and the reality <laughs> that's his way of how he how he put it but i would say every person has their individual genius on how they can can do so now if you're in the marketplace and it's market dynamics you you can't be you can't be uh A fool, just like that snake that, that took shelter of Narada Muni, and he told the snake not to bite anybody, and then he came back and complained that the kids were throwing rocks and sticks at him, and he said, okay, what you do is you show your hood, but you don't bite. So if you're in the job world, if you're in the marketplace, you have to hold your position. You don't have to bite, but you just do your job but don't be vengeful, don't be aggressive. And in this way, we can stay true to our bhakti path. At the same time, we can also be functional in this world. That's what Arjuna had to do. He, he, he was in a very tough spot because he had to shoot arrows and, uh, and kill people who were his teachers, his relatives, his family members. Certainly a very troublesome uh, job not just giving somebody some feedback that they may not like. Yet uh, it was his service, it was expected of him. But first he showed his appreciation. So he, he, he shot arrows at the feet of Drona 
and Bhishma, and and they they shot arrows at at his that grazed his crown, and 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 so he paid his obeisances, and they gave their blessings. They said, "Okay, very nice. You showed your respects. Now you can come and kill us." So we have to know also. Uh, what's conducive? What does this person need at the moment? Sometimes all a person can take is praise. Sometimes they need tough love. They need a little strong talking. But oftentimes we see that if we're not careful, it may become discouraging. It, it may put the person off and they may become disturbed and go away. And as Prabhupada put it, if the person goes away, it's your fault. <laughs> Because, because, you know, in the name of preaching strongly in the, in the service of Prabhupada, we just upset the person and, and kind of prolonged his stay in the material world. So very few people are able to grasp constructive criticism and feedback and will not fight back. So I would rather err on the side of appreciation, on the side of caution then on the side of giving people, giving people the sauce. That's just my personal observation on how I feel. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Other questions or reflections? Yes, Bhagavan Nara Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, one question, another one came up. But sometimes I think we as devotees can become so focused, not even on the external, not even on the service, right? But like the externalities of like becoming a where we uh, you're a little faint. Can you talk closer to the Sometimes I think as devotees, we can become so focused on like certain externalities of becoming a Vaishnava details that we lose out on the importance of actually being personal and revealing our hearts, especially sometimes if we're senior and there's a junior or for a junior trying to explain to a senior how we're um, feeling about a particular part of our relationship that we either dismiss or we get dismissed um, as offensive or whatnot when you're just simply trying to question, when you're simply trying to like, you know, figure out how to make this relationship work. So what advice would you have to that? Where it becomes so formal that there's a loss of touch on the heart. Yeah, I hear you. Um, if you're in the junior position, we can't demand it and we can't force it because it's not our call. We can, we can ask uh the senior if if they can uh like one time i was in moscow and i called uh my spiritual master he had shingles because they had arranged a a book uh tour for him that took him all over the united states and they had like three four five programs a day early morning late night and no rest and he got shingles i don't know if all of you know what shingles is but it's a very debilitating severely painful disease like this extreme red rashes and I, I was quite upset because i saw that they had booked this this pr company and paid them a lot of money and now my guru was was out there doing all these engagements with talk shows at 6 a.m and 11 p.m on this wild goose chase and he got sick and so i just wanted to address it so i asked him can we put the formal guru disciple relationship aside for a moment? And can I just talk to you heart to heart and just share my, my feelings, my observations? And he said, yes. So I said my piece. I said what I had to say. And then uh, he, he smiled and he appreciated it. <laughs> and then we went back to <laughs> it. didn't change much, but he allowed me to, to voice my concern. And I think he really appreciated that I made my point. Now, I didn't really affect the bigger picture, but for me, for my side, I had to do this. Then when it's us towards juniors, 
we should really be aware and see that that uh, people are really looking for empathy. They're really looking for uh, understanding, for presence, for kindness, for appreciation, and not for reinforcing the code and the protocol. So if we really insist, I have seen a lot of people go away or, or become quite alienated because others uh, rubbed it in and, and, and insisted on, on, on formalities, on externals, especially in situations of crisis. Just like we have the instance in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where Lord Nityananda kicked Shivananda Sena in the chest. You remember that incident? Shivananda Sena was supposed to arrange all the accommodation, but he got held up at the toll place. And so when he came, Lord Nityananda was hungry and upset, and he just kicked him straight in the chest. And Shivananda Sena felt very happy. He felt very blessed. I mean, what a mercy. <laughs> Lord Nityananda just <laughs> showed him. He was ecstatic. But, but uh, Shrikan, his nephew, he didn't think it was such a great thing. He, he, felt, he felt upset because his uncle, who is a close, intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya, got kicked in the chest. So Shrikan was upset. So he just left that party and went straight to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when he walked into Mahaprabhu's uh, presence, he had his coat on, he had his shirt on. He was so upset, he forgot the protocol that when, you, when you're... Like when you go and you offer deity worship, you don't go in there with your coat and your shirt and all your things on. You have to be properly. Uh, so, and I forget it was Swagut Damodar, one of the intimate associates wanted to point that out to Sri Khan. But Lord Chaitanya told his assistant, I forget if it was Swagut Damodar or, or it was Govinda. He told him, don't, don't, don't tell him he's 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 upset so so don't tell him and Trikan saw that Lord Chaitanya understood his heart he understood what was going on so he cooled down he immediately cooled down and his anger subsided and he became pacified why because Mahaprabhu did not insist on the protocol but he put the protocol aside and said okay He's in distress. This is an emergency situation. Let's deal with this. And so it really requires us to be uh, Krishna conscious, to be in tune with, with the Lord in the heart who, who will tell us what's the right thing to do in, in this situation. So these are the two ways. Of course, it's always easier said than done <laughs> when, you're, when you're under the gun and, and things are happening and it's hard to kind of, you know, think and act at the same time. Yet, we know Krishna is in the heart and, and Krishna will give us the, the intelligence and the strength to, to act adequately. Again, I would rather act and err on the side of caution of of uh, of being a little too kind and too uh, permissive than to be too strict and too harsh because you can always you can always uh, put in a few more points later on but if you lose them right in the beginning then it's hard to go back and to reconnect in the relationship. So you gotta keep them alive. You gotta keep that relationship alive. Don't let people drop that ball. Mm -hmm. Then knowing that later on, there will be other opportunities to state your case and to help people understand and improve. Don't try to put too much in one situation otherwise operation successful but the patient died so what good does that do i don't know if that helps bhagavan art but that's as much as i sounds good thank you of saying thank you. <laughs> on this on this topic
And also we should cut some slack also to our seniors because <clears throat> sometimes we expect everybody <clears throat> to be acting and dealing completely perfect. And we, we forget that there is also human nature involved. There's also emotions involved. And that means that people will also react. So we have to take that into consideration also. Just like when Vidura met Maitreya, he, he asked about the, the disappearance of the Yadu dynasty, even though he already knew that they had all been killed in a fratricidal war. So Prabhupada comments in the purport that his question was of a psychological nature because he had to process, he had to come to terms with all these events. He need to talk about it. He already knew that it had happened, but it was weighing so heavily on him that he needed to process and he had to get that solace, that counsel of, of having the possibility to reflect on this scenario with a mature person like Maitreya. I oftentimes was in the situation of walking with my spiritual master after the GBC meetings, after they had discussions for seven, eight, 10 hours on very heavy topics. And we would just walk around Mayapur and he would just share and reflect and talk about so many things of so many topics. And it was just kind of unwinding, just kind of coming, coming to terms with all the things that, that had transpired. So it's important that, that we also give each other that space to, to be human and to, to share our heart, our emotions. Not just, uh, yeah, business as usual, no problem. Everything's perfect. And then next thing you know, things go sideways. Any other questions or reflections? I appreciate you speaking just this last point about walking with your guru. I mean, there's a lot of times where I'm unwinding or even venting or speaking or ranting and raving or whatever. And I feel, am I doing too much? Do I, I feel guilty or whatever? But it's, it's actually very healthy. You know, it's very, it helps me kind of figure things out. So I appreciate you sharing that point. I mean, it's okay to be emotional and to try and be a devotee at the same time. We're yeah, not different people, yes, and different people process in different ways. Some process through talking. Others, they just go in, in their workshop and they start tinkering around with their toys. And, you know, others, they get on their electronics. So different people have different ways of how to process. And we have to know what works for us. Mm -hmm. And our communities should provide that, that, that safe zone that safe space where we can share our hearts that to shyanticha ramanticha and it doesn't come out uh, as venting it doesn't come out offensive it doesn't come out as counterproductive but we can learn the art of expressing ourselves in a krishna conscious way and then more and more we'll get to the point where we'll mostly just do kirtan and uh, hear harikata together and that will help us to to process our our experiences and and our emotions other questions or comments so i just wanted to appreciate the houston community of opening their hearts and doors to the Krishna house uh, devotees and accommodating and encouraging them. It's kind of a interesting new phase, new chapter in the development of the, of the Yatra. And I see a lot, of, a lot of potential in that. So yeah, thank you all of you who are there uh, mentoring and guiding and tolerating and encouraging and inspiring all these young devotees. I think it's really the way forward to, to create uh, sustainable communities by uh, giving them the space and the support <laughs> that they need and also the room to make their own mistakes because that's part of the growing up process. 
so that's it's a really nice thing to see that that uh, that that's happening in Houston and also in other places. So I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by that. Thank you for being appreciative of us, and we're very appreciative of you. Anyone else have any final comments? I just like to share one little anecdote from Srila Prabhupada. When he was in England, they were staying at uh, John Lennon's estate. I'm sure you've read this uh, in the little Amrita, and the devotees were doing uh, some gardening and some renovation in uh, compensation for their stay there. <laughs> And so Prabhupada was, uh, he was speaking to John Lennon's um, gardener uh, about British sports cars, because he saw that man was really interested in that. And Prabhupada probably knew some, something. So, so later on, the gardener really appreciated Prabhupada because Prabhupada had, had talked with him about British sports cars. So, <laughs> so that shows that, you know, love me, love my dog. So that whatever it gets people to show their appreciation and their, uh, give them their attention, turn somehow their attention towards devotees or Krishna consciousness, that is a, uh, a good reason. That is a good thing to do. In this way, they will make spiritual progress and they will actually uh, come closer. They will come closer to Krishna. I, I was in Aarhus, Denmark, uh, distributing books at the train station and there was a lady on a bicycle. And when I showed her the books, she said, I met this man. I said, it's very unlikely. Uh, he died in 77. She said, I'm from Hollywood, California. And when I was 17 years old, uh, me and my best friend, uh, high school, we, we went on our bicycles down to uh, Culver City because we heard that the Swami was there. And when he came out of the car, we threw flower petals on the road. And then he walked over them. And then she looked at me and she said, and then where he walked over, I collected those petals and I still have them today. Like a little mischievous young girl, you know, she must have been mid seventies. So, and then, I got goosebumps. I felt like, you know, I'm there. I'm, I'm directly there on the spot. Prabhupada's walking out of the car. They're throwing the flowers, you know, she's collecting them. And then uh, she took books. She gave me money. Then she said, I've not given you enough. She, she started giving me fruit and vegetables. She wanted to give me bread. She wanted to give me her bicycle. I said, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. You already gave me more <laughs> than I ever asked for. You know, you gave me that moment with Prabhupada. We call these the Prabhupada moments when you, you meet Prabhupada uh, in your life uh, by just trying to be of service and try to share Prabhupada's uh, love and Prabhupada's affection with others. And then that comes back in, 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 in many fold ways, uh, in many fold ways. So Thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. And uh, it is great credit to, to your community and your spiritual master that, that you have uh, made the place so attractive and welcoming. And I'm counting the days till I can be there again and have your association. It's, uh, it's, it's tough here in the desert of California. I mean, we had a couple of storms now. <laughs> but still, uh, uh, but service and separation is, is um, yeah, it's bittersweet, yet we're looking forward to, to, to see all of you soon. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope this was adequate. I hear we got some announcements here. So, okay, the announcements are in your chat box. All right, so I wish you a happy end of the uh, proper marathon. It's still some couple of weeks and looking forward to see you sometime soon. Thank you very much. All goes to Srila Prabhupada.
And please try out this exercise. Appreciate three people a day. Anybody, friends, family members, colleagues, strangers, and you'd be surprised. You appreciate them. Uh, they'll appreciate you back and they look at you like, do you have something for me? Is there something you wanted to tell me? And there is your opening where you can either show them uh, your new uh, t-shirt or give them one of Prabhupada's books. Depends on uh, what mood you're in. So <laughs> thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thanks so much, Prabhu. Gorbakta Rinda Kijai. Hari Bol. Thank you, Sarva. Hari Bol. Hari Krishna. All the way to Prabhupada.